Hello guys, uh, I will admit it has been a while again, um, the last time that I saw you guys was about, uh, three months ago, uh, mid-March, and back then I had kind of talked about how the whole COVID situation was, um, going on in my area, and I had wanted to originally push this episode out then, uh, but with all that going on, I decided just to not focus on things like this right now, and just more focus on stuff that I had to do, like finishing high school and all that, which I managed to do, and so that's all done now, and it's summer, it's um, mid-June here. And I figure, hey, you know, it's about time I should uh, probably get back to this because it's, uh, at least where I am, it's starting to kind of, things are kind of starting to uh, come back a little bit. You know, there's still concerns and all that, obviously, and there will be for quite a while, but it's to a point where I'm like, okay, I can start to get back to a state of normal-ish, uh, if, if you know. Um, and the other factor is that this, um, uh, like, obviously this whole city has a sort of fall aesthetic to it, and, um, Prez has just now finished, uh, New Windsor, which is, I, I think we can all agree, is easily one of the best City Skyline series that's ever been done. It's just fantastic. Um, and I suppose, well, hey, there's probably people who really like that fall aesthetic, and I am doing that. So if anyone wants to see some of that, uh, I'm right here too. So, I mean, not only am I making a city that I enjoy making, uh, but I am creating something that is filling something that there is now seemingly a gap for. And I feel like that's uh, a nice positive aspect. Uh, what I'm doing here, I just decided to start off this episode by making a small little sort of... Um, office thing, little office unit on the edge of downtown here, just to kind of fill in this uh, awkward little block. Um, it, it turned out alright, I just used these basic little office assets, and I'm probably going to use those more in the future because they are simple. Um, I do wish I had more sorts of like small little one unit office buildings um, instead of big ones, but um, I, I can come to that later when we do stuff like that. Anyways, what this episode is going to be... All about really the meat and potatoes of this episode um, we are going to be making a mall um, and this mall is actually sort of the more abandoned mall in town because I think I mentioned it before there's going to be uh, a few malls in the city um, and I wanted one of them to be abandoned for sure uh, again I think I've mentioned this so I'm sorry if I'm being kind of um, if, if I'm saying things that I've already said before, but I, I feel like having a um, an abandoned-ish mall would be something that definitely adds to like the character uh, of an area, like an area that's kind of in decline or just um, an area that just isn't nice in general. And in the actual inspiration for this uh, city, um, I. There is still a mall, but it's also on the verge of becoming kind of dead and abandoned. And there was another mall that was... I don't think it was ever doing too well, and it was the one that I went to more often. Um, which was actually kind of closer to this part of the city where I'm building this, but wasn't quite there. And that one is... Um, it is now gone. It was actually, I think, being, I think I saw it being demolished like last year or two years ago or something. It is gone now. Um, and the one thing I notice is that the malls that tend to be the ones that die out are the ones in areas that tend to be like the smaller malls. And so that's what I, that's one of the things that I took into account when making this particular mall is I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too big because I don't want to set the standard for how big the other malls are and then be like, okay, well they have to be bigger than the uh, than the one that's like on the verge of closing. Um, and so what I did, I, I gave this mall uh, obviously a fair number of uh, anchor stores that, um, you know, it's kind of big for a mall this, uh, for a mall its size when you look at how much like actual room there is besides the anchor stores. But 
in a way that actually um, I think works really well. Uh, we only ever had one mall where I actually lived, like in this town. We only ever had one, and it was kind of similar to uh, what I just described in that it had three anchor stores, but there was only ever um, a few dozen um, shops inside the mall, and beyond that it was never even filled to capacity ever since it opened and it closed about 10 years ago now um so that's something that can actually kind of draw on experience from it's like i have seen malls that just are they look like they have all the big stuff like this mall i gave it the uh i gave it the macy's i gave it the dillard's and stuff um but inside there's no substance to it and i feel like that's something that can help the abandoned feel to the mall. What I'm using here, I'm using these uh, mall walls, <laughs> mall wall, that I, I think came with some of the mall assets that I use. Um, and I think this was actually a mistake in the long run because I end up having to place all of the individual little roof things on the <laughs> roof things um yeah all the roofs on this uh area that i've built as you can see i start to do now and it is just hell to do that i'm sure there's an easier way to do it i don't know the easier way to do it it's hard to perfectly align it uh but i did not have a fun time like getting the roof to be perfectly on top of the wall but i did have an asset that would have made this easier i could have just used the basic um mall extensions that come with Skyland Mall, but I didn't because I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to use that on the other malls, uh, and I don't want them to all look, you know, super similar, so I wanted this one to be uh, at least a little more different in the way that it also has walls that also make it look a little bit older. I think the brick uh, for a wall looks, uh, looks older than the white walls that come with the Skyland Mall assets. Um, and I, I, I think that that does a good bit for the, uh, again, the feel that I'm going for of an abandoned mall. And so I decide what I do here, how I do this. I first lay all of the, um, all of the roof assets on the ground. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them up using move it momentarily. And that is not, again, it, it's not great because then in the end you're able to see kind of there's a little bit of a gap but again as long as you don't look too closely at it, it it's fine um i get i got to a point in this build where i realized it wasn't going to be the best but i'm like well i want to finish this because when i when i made this i just wanted to churn out more and more stuff and that's not exactly i i think the way to do things i think the way to do things is definitely try to make something more quality rather than just churn out crap after crap um but i was on such I, I was for some reason on such a mood when i recorded this and i'm like yeah i'm gonna record all these episodes and, and it's gonna be great i recorded this directly after the last episode and i'm only just now getting to um getting to making it and really truth be told there i can really make these mostly anytime i just always am like uh, doing other things because there's other games i play and i watch a bunch of youtube videos and there's just so much stuff that i end up doing uh and here i'm using skylights and that's definitely a thing i wanted to do because i like seeing skylights in malls also my channel name is skylight so that that's that's kind of neat um and these aren't these obviously aren't the best looking skylight assets when you're looking them up close but hey i had a lot of fun uh, just putting these in here as a nice little touch because you know by itself this mall isn't really too detailed uh, and also this guy kind of help you to tell okay well where's the hallways like the corridors in this mall because obviously those would be like in the corridors and that's kind of a, a way to help you figure that out um, so I think that that worked you know definitely in the favor of the project um, and I, I set aside this whole area of land pretty much just for the mall because I want it to be this big monolithic structure that takes up so much land even though since it's abandoned it doesn't really do a whole lot for the area 
I want it to be like that because that's a thing that you see. That's just how a lot of shopping centers are is they just take up so much room. Now, whether that's a lot, whether it's utilized good or not is obviously case to case. For example, in this case, it is not used well at all. But in the case of like the Mall of America, which is very large, uh, that space is used uh, really well. And, uh, one of the things that helps Ben, by the way, I think, is uh, they use uh, a lot of parking garages, which is definitely more um, efficient than all the surface parking that you see at malls, like the one I'm building here. Um, and it was yeah, here you can see I'm kind of struggling with the road design uh, because I decided to put it in an angle, and I could, I could have easily just fixed this by not having the angle. But I wanted to have the angle, and I was not willing to compromise on that because I felt it, you know, just that little touch. There's these little touches that don't really do a lot, that feel like they do, and I'm going to keep doing those. Um, and you can see kind of over where I drew the uh, connection to the main roads there. There's that whole corner that I don't really end up doing much with um, yet. I don't know if I'm going to put, like a, like, a hotel there or, like, a little you know, shopping outlet or something, or something else abandoned. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but you know, all the rest of this is all for the, um, is all for the mall. And these parking lot roads, as great as they are, uh, I always have trouble doing it because I have to figure out, okay, well, I gotta align it perfectly, and it's just a mess, so a lot of times I actually don't use them, but I figure, well, in this case, I will because it's, it's just, it's what people like to see. Um, and also the textures of like the old stain ones like this, it, that does look pretty good. Um, but then yeah, going back to the road layout, I wasn't able to really fit much parking next to the um, Macy's then because of the limited um, you know space that I gave myself with those blocks because of the awkward shape. But what I end up doing is I, I end up uh, making kind of like a separate little lot that has darker pavement. Um, and the reason I think that works is because the Macy's definitely looks like it's newer, um, but it's obviously still kind of like abandoned, it's part of this abandoned mall. And so what I think is, well, this is the most modern anchor store in the entire mall, uh, there could be some use for it, and so we can imagine that some company comes in and decides to, uh, yeah, you can see that there's kind of the stuff with like not so much darker asphalt, but like the brighter lines. Um, this company comes in and is like, hey, we can use this space. And so that's why there's those parking lots there. They resurface that for their employees or whatever. And for that, I drew inspiration from the stories I heard on Bright Sun Films channel, uh, which is a great channel you should go check out. There's all sorts of stuff on there about abandoned stuff. Um, about in particular stories like the uh, Randall Park Mall and the Rolling Acres Mall in which while the mall itself often gets destroyed um, some anchor stores get end up being reused by other um, other entities I guess I should say and those get preserved at the time of the demolition of the rest of the mall uh, for example, I think I think it is in um, the Randall Park Mall where they had a trade college come in, um, and I think that building still stands. Um, one of the interesting things too that I think is funny is how a lot of these um, malls are kind of driven down by like online sales, like Amazon and stuff, and then the Rolling Acres Mall uh, got converted. That area is now a um, uh, Amazon like fulfillment center that's kind of funny that's I don't know like if that's intentional I would imagine like not I would imagine they obviously probably don't think about that but for me to think about that I think that's just actually kind of funny it's like okay well we we killed this uh, we killed this mall and oh hey uh, look at that it's a uh, it's free real estate obviously it wasn't free but I saw the opportunity for the meme and I took it uh, we're getting towards the end of this episode here. As you can see, this was not the greatest um, the greatest thing in the world. But we do have our first mall in place. It's a nice kind of um, abandoned mall with not a whole lot seemingly going on. 
Um, there's not too much detail outside. Like, there's not, you know, a, not, not a whole lot of it is, like, beautified and stuff. But I feel like that fits with the aesthetic of this place is blighted. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, COVID goes, it's winding down in my area. I have more time to work on stuff like this this summer. If I can remember to... Uh, I'm, I'm done making promises with that because honestly I can't hold myself accountable for anything really at this point um, but coming fall I will have to be focusing a lot on college so that is going to be um, important but anyways I hope you guys are all being safe I hope things are fine in your area um, I hope you've been finding ways to occupy your time. I hope that I'm able to create content that can at least help you pass time. Um, you know, if you enjoy it, that's an added bonus. But with that being said, I'm going to let the rest of the video just take its course here. And I am going to say goodbye. Please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.